What's up guys and welcome to today's video. Hope everybody is good today. I'm gonna to show you exactly what I would do if I could only go to the gym once per week. Now this is obviously quite an extreme scenario and in my case probably would not even happen, but a lot of you guys, if you are struggling with time or maybe you can't get access to a gym and you can only go once, I'm gonna show you exactly what you should do if you wanna try and maximize the effectiveness of a workout and prioritize hypertrophy. Starting off with chest. What exercise would I do if I could only choose one exercise for chest? What an extremely difficult question. However, after much thought, I've decided to go with a dumbbell press on a slight incline. The reason why I've chosen dumbbell press over a barbell press or let's say for example a machine press is because it just allows you a little bit more freedom of movement, particularly when it comes to hand positioning and also elbow positioning. I'm also selecting a slight incline when doing the press because First of all, I want to try and target more my upper chest. I already have a pretty well-developed lower chest, but this is also quite applicable for a lot of people. Because there's a little bit more external rotation whenever you're doing an incline press, it's usually a little bit more joint friendly at the shoulder. It's more pleasant. If say, for example, you're doing a flat press, to get yourself into this position, it's usually a little bit more uncomfortable. Usually the risk of injury is a little bit greater at the bottom of the movement, but if you change the angle a little bit more, you can usually go a little bit deeper without any kind of aggravation at the shoulder joint. The dumbbell press would be the first choice. If I had to choose something else, it'd be some form of a machine press, but only if that machine was a good machine that not only was comfortable, but also applied the resistance where I wanted it to be applied. Now moving on to the back muscles. The back, because it's such a large muscle group in comparison to shoulders, biceps, triceps, and chest. I would realistically want to choose at least two exercises for this, okay? The first one I would do would be a T-bar row to try and hit the mid to upper back. The reason why I would choose a T-bar row over anything else, mostly because of the chest support, okay? So the T-bar row with the chest support just means that I can really take my back to complete failure without my spine giving up first. It's usually the case I've found, particularly at my level of training experience, the weight which I need to lift. If I'm lifting over 100 kilograms bent over, my lower back really starts to give way before my back muscles do. My second back exercise of choice would focus more on the lats and the lower lat. One of the best movements to allow that to occur would be any kind of pull down movement where you're in a neutral or underhand grip and the elbow is going out in front of you and then being pulled down to the bottom. That's where your lat is getting worked as efficiently as it possibly can be. There's nothing wrong with doing a like a, a wide grip pull down, but it tends to be other muscle groups which help to move that weight from point A to B. Now, when it comes to the shoulders, I wouldn't choose any exercise to focus on the front delt because your front delt is gonna get enough stimulation when you're doing the dumbbell or machine press. What I really would wanna work on is my mid delt because the physique without any mid delts looks kind of weird to be honest with you. Mid delts help with getting a little bit of the V taper and you know, most people have pretty shitty mid delts, so don't neglect them. In an ideal world, and I do live in an ideal world, I would use a machine like this, some form of a lateral raise machine. The reason why is because we're training the delt where it's relatively strongest in the lengthened position. And this is something which dumbbell lateral raises just don't do. Okay, there's very minimal resistance during the first almost third of the movement. And then when you reach the top, where the delta is in the shortened position, that's when the resistance is greatest. So the profile is not great. So something like this is ideal. In particular, this machine is just so tasty the way it's put together. Already at the start of the movement, there's a significant amount of resistance. So I'm training my delts in the lengthened position. And then as we come up, it gets relatively lighter. Okay. Leaning forward a little bit just to ensure that the mid delt is constantly in the tension. And honestly, that's one of the best exercises you can do. So the resistance profile on that is literally perfect. That is a Watson machine, I believe. Unfortunately, most gyms do not have lateral raise machines. So my second best choice would be to do a lying cable lateral raise instead. Now we're gonna move on to the lower body and the quads. If I had to pick one exercise that would absolutely demolish the quads, it would be the pendulum squat. Again, unfortunately, a lot of gyms don't have this, but it, if you do have the opportunity to use one, it should be an essential in your lower body training catalog. The reason why it's so good, first of all, you've got the back support, okay? Whenever I do free weight squats, whether it be uh, front squat, back squat, 
I usually find, particularly when I'm loading myself up with a lot of weight, there's a lot of tension which is going on my lower back and it's usually my lower back that gives way before my quads. Secondly, it's really easy for almost everybody to get to the full depth to allow for the full range of motion to occur. For a lot of people, even if they're doing hack squats, for example, the reasons why it's not as efficient as this is because a lot of people still struggle to get that depth that's required to really get the quad into the lengthened position, okay? So this one, when I do it, and I am not the most flexible person, I'm pretty restricted in terms of my ankle dorsiflexion, I can still get to full depth, okay? I would just not be able to do this doing a front squat, back squat, or even a hack squat. I can't get that depth. If I had to pick a second choice, I would choose hack squat. Again, because of the back support. You know, for me, I'm at the point now where I'm lifting pretty heavy weight. Doing a back squat is just not gonna be the one for me if I really wanna load up my quads. There's gonna be too many other muscle groups which are gonna take over. The reason I do it without my shoes on is just for added stability. So I'm not rocking around in my trainers, which are definitely not optimal for doing leg workouts in. So if I had to choose one hamstring exercise, it would without a doubt be the seated leg curl. The reason why the seated leg curl is so good is because first of all, it will put your body into a position where your hamstrings are naturally fully lengthened, which is great. So whenever you're training them, there's resistance being applied in the lengthened position and the mid range as well, which is optimal. Second of all, because of the way this is set up, one which has a, a pad, it means that you're completely locked into position, which is ideal to stop your body from cheating, moving about, allowing other muscle groups to take over. So if you get yourself, stay in this position, push against the pad, really the only muscle that can move, shorten and lengthen, is the hamstring. If the gym didn't have a seated hamstring curl, or even if it did, but it didn't have the support, I would actually skip it because I need something to keep my body locked in place. Without that support, I just can't do that. So the second choice would be, it would be a toss between a Romanian deadlift and a lying leg curl. I would probably go for a lying leg curl because for me, honestly, when I do a Romanian deadlift, the majority of the time, I just can't help but load up my glutes, okay? My glutes will take over the hamstring. So for me personally, it's not the most efficient exercise if I want to try and target my hamstrings. The main two reasons why I don't like the lying leg curl as much is first of all, I'm not as locked in position. So you'll notice a lot of people when they do this, they lift their bum up into the air and they try and spread the tension. And a lot of people, when they do this, they end up having like a lower back pump, which is kind of not really what you want to be getting when you're doing a hamstring curl. And then secondly, just because of the way it's set up, your hamstrings are not naturally in their lengthened position when your body is straight. Okay, so you're kind of, you're more so training the mid to shorten range. You're not getting that full resistance profile added to the lengthened position of the hamstring. Still a good exercise, particularly if you have the ability and discipline to lock yourself in place, but I would personally always go for a seated leg curl. So we've covered the quad, we've covered the hamstring. I wouldn't skip the glute, I would still pick an exercise to train my glutes, because first of all, you know, even if you're a guy, you don't want to have a flat ass because it just looks a bit weird. But second of all, having a weak glute is kind of like a broken link in the posterior chain. You want everything to be strong to prevent injury, but also to have a complete aesthetic. So I would basically want to pick an exercise where I can get myself into this position, okay? Because I want to really lengthen the glutes as much as possible. It would be a toss up between doing a hip thrust or some kind of Bulgarian split squat. Okay, you can do a split squat and target the quad, but a lot of it is really down to torso and foot positioning. If I want to hit the glute, then I would try and keep the knee above the center of my foot and I would lean forward a little bit more. So here, I've got a maximum stretch in my glute, okay? And then just being fully focused, I try and maintain the tension on the glute throughout the movement. I want to come up to the top because then I'd just be resting. If I wanted to hit my quad more, I'd bring my foot a little bit further forward. I'd keep my torso more upright and then I would just think about pushing my knee out in front of my foot as much as possible whilst keeping my heel on the ground, okay? This would be more quad focused. Who are gonna smash the glutes? Now, I personally prefer to do the Smith machine because it just means that my upper body doesn't tire out. Say for example, if I'm holding dumbbells, it usually does, particularly if I'm holding some heavy dumbbells, I have to use wrist straps, but my forearms end up burning and then I just lose concentration. But with a Smith machine, I don't need to worry about holding onto the weight, you can just rest on me and I can really take my glutes to failure. So again, I take my shoes off just for added stability, get myself positioned properly, sink down, lean forward, and then thrust up 
using just my glutes. So in my opinion, it's an amazing exercise. Every time I do this and I do it properly, my ass is absolutely destroyed the following few days after I've done it. So that is my lower body covered in the workout. And you might argue, Mike, well, where's the calf training? Realistically, if I'm gonna be training one session per week, I'm not gonna waste my precious time and energy training calves. I'm afraid I'm just gonna to have to skip calf training. Oh no, it is what it is. And now we're gonna finish up with some biceps and triceps. Now, I'd, I mean, you could skip them if you wanted to, but to me, having a good set of arms is necessary to have that complete physique, particularly with the upper body. So if I had to choose one exercise for the biceps, I would almost always go for single arm dumbbell bicep curl on the preacher bench. Reason why I would do single arm, first of all, is because it's more joint friendly with the elbows. Okay, usually if you're doing any kind of standing curl or even if you're doing a preacher curl, naturally your elbows want to kind of point out a little bit. Single arm, you can align yourself so your elbow is pointing directly downwards and it's just going to be a lot easier on the joint itself. There'll be less aggravation. And I would use the preacher bench itself because it gives you that support, okay? It eliminates any cheating or any rocking of your torso or even movement at the elbow joint. A lot of people, when they do a bicep curl, they move the elbow too much, okay? Obviously that's a bit excessive, but the movement of the elbow and the torso, you're just cheating. And one of the added benefits of doing a preacher curl with a single arm is when you do start to reach concentric failure, particularly on like the last set, you can just spot yourself and really push beyond that point of failing and the concentric phase. And then you can just lower it down. And if you don't have a preacher bench, no need to worry, you could literally just do the same thing on an incline bench as well. You can get your arm in the same position, your torso in the same position and just replicate the same movement. Now with the triceps, this one's a little bit more difficult, I would say, because usually whenever I set up my tricep training, there's usually one exercise which involves some kind of pushing, one exercise where there's an extension, and then one exercise where the elbow is above the head and I'm pulling on some resistance over on top of my head. Ah, that kind of hits all heads and allows you to get that really juicy looking 3D tricep. But if I had to choose one, I would, I would probably go for some form of uh, extension, the, uh, the cable crossover, so this one. The reason why I like this is because good profile, resistance profile, you train the triceps in the lengthened mid position, okay? The, the, the majority of the resistance is gonna be here in the lengthened mid, and then the resistance tapers off in the shortened position here when it's relatively weaker. So that's ideal. And secondly, because of the angle at which I'm pulling, it's just gonna be a lot more joint friendly at the elbow. So let's say for example, if I was to do any kind of, uh, let's say for example, a skull crush or extension with a straight bar, there's usually a lot of unnecessary forces placed at the elbow joint. And if you do too much of that, the elbows don't like it. But this, a lot more joint friendly, as I said before. If I didn't have the cables, my second choice would probably be close grip press. Close grip press with a neutral grip. If you could do that, that's gonna be pretty damn good for the triceps as well. So that is it. That is the exact routine which I would do if I could only train once per week. Now, obviously, there's quite a lot of exercises in there, so it's going to take longer than usual to execute that workout. Probably an hour and a half, realistically, but an hour and a half really isn't that bad if you're only going to the gym once a week. It's certainly not overtraining, and you're certainly going to have the capability to smash through it all because you're only training once a week. It's absolutely nothing. One or two muscle groups, I suppose, missed out there. Didn't really hit up the calves, didn't really focus on the rear delts. Maybe you could throw in some rear delt flies with the reverse pec deck if you wanted to. But honestly, those exercises, when done properly, should be enough to tick you over, maintain, or even grow, depending on how heavy you're lifting. If you were to ask me, Mike, well, I can only go to the gym three times per week, what would be the best three workouts to do? Well, I put them all together in the first half, okay? Here, male, female, we have three, four, five day training splits, three days. These are my optimal, tried and tested with myself and clients, the best workouts which I would do. You can only train three times per week, if you can only train four times per week, same things again, we've got a little bit more variation and the same thing with five times per week, even more variation. A lot of these, which one you choose is very dependent upon which muscle group you want to focus on. So obviously there'll be strong points, weak points, different goals and different times of the year. But if you haven't already subscribed to the first app, that says just you do, 
And then exactly 24 hours after this video has gone live, there's gonna be a sale on the website where you can get a big discount to signing up to the app. So make sure you don't miss out. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you have done. And I'll see you in the next one.